whatever you want to so say the kenya Marans exit the world cup qualifiers winless so what's next so this article is by mozart sport poor preparations have clouded the team's ability to give a good account of themselves and in the process kenya lost the chance to make the world cup debut so national men's basketball team kenya Marans are out of the FIBA world cup qualifiers exiting without a single win in the four team group d that play that played its matches across two windows so the first window is in february and the second one is in July. So this is the recent window is in July. But this result I predicted it earlier, way back in January, when I even not even way back in January, when way back when we were drawn last year with Senegal, Egypt and Congo DR. I just knew that we didn't have stand a chance against those teams and I made my sentiments public, of which I got a lot of backlash on them. I got flamed a lot. I was I was called out about a lot of things. A uh, uh, Kenya Morant's hater, you know, uh, someone said that I'm like a critic, I'm a tough critic, like someone can go to an extent name and say that I'm a skip playlist, but all I'm saying is I just use empirical stats and facts to back up everything in my opinion. I look at the film, dissect it, go to the star sheet, and give a fact and, and, and a fact-based opinion on what I've seen. So what I've seen right now is a total result of total incompetence from the board and the managers it couldn't have gone any other way we had four months to prepare for the second window to be able to recover we only took eight players we lost uh, our a plus, a plus coaching coach Liz Mills I actually thought at first she was the problem but in digging deeper I saw that the team was the problem not her because when she joined ASLA coach Liz Mills former coach Liz Mills she joined as the head coach of the ASLA team in a span of five games, she was able to win three. But in a span of seven games, when she took control of the Morans team in the second window, in the February window of the Afro Basket, and also the actual Afro Basket, where she she took control, she she went two of seven, two of five out of seven games. So you could see that the pieces that she was given they were not ideal. Even the people that the personnel that she was grouped with. Were not the most ideal people to work with, honestly. Uh, they they are not the pieces that could be able to contend because you could keep them, but you're never going to win anything with them. So when she was given an A level roster in an ASL, she took them to the playoffs. Okay, they got bounced in the first round, but out of five games, she won three games, and they were tough games because it's in the BAL, and she made the play. She took that team to the playoffs. So aside from that, I digress. But when you look at the Kenya Marans team, this is a team that they, they they unceremoniously fired Coach Cliff in the first window. That was in November 2020. The, the Kenya Basketball Federation brought in Coach Liz Mills for the February window and the Afro Basket, of which they didn't even have the decency or courtesy to even extend her and tell her, like because of the work that you have done, we just want to allow you to stay. Please stay with us. They need to say that they just outrightly said that we only need you for the afro basket run that's it so i saw that was very very uh detrimental especially for a team that she has she has been with for for a while now and given the caliber of coach she is uh, i'm just i'm just saying we needed her on our on our side and the problem is we let her go and not only did she leave also tyler ongwai the reports out, out or it back in january Saying that Ray Longo, I could I covered it, covered that uh, extensively in a video that I made uh, way back in January this year, and those are the red flags that I saw that may, made me have cold feet and say that you're going to lose all the games. And I predicted it, and it happened. Uh, as much as people do not like to hear the truth, that is the truth, and uh, we lost. We lost. And right now, as we stand, we are the laughing stock of the African, in the African basketball community, even in, in I guess in the international basketball community, because no other side in the whole qualifiers looked as bad. Okay, teams a team like Rwanda went winless, but they didn't look as bad as the way Kenya looked. Because even in the second window, we got a walkover in the Congo DR game. I'm pretty sure they, they felt some type of way about it. Then in the Egypt game, we only had eight people. Coach Guy, I don't know who made him the head coach. They gave him that position, but I feel like they set him up for failure because 
they didn't even adequately prepare they just plugged in people uh, they didn't even have any camp that they even reported to and honestly it's just pains me to see uh, a team just give being given like be, being given like the <laughs> a raw deal when you give that you can tell the players just come and play for us then when you you know you lose it just hits your it just hits your resume and it hits you like a ton of bricks so he, the, the the team was just set up to failure all day or set up for failure all day from the get-go and it's because they didn't practice and they didn't even train they didn't have a decency to even go back and train so the morans were part of a 16 elite group we're going back to the articles the morans were but they are part of a 16 team elite group that was fighting to book their five stores available for their continental for the continental for the continent to the next year's world cup so the 16 nations were angola cameroon cape Verde, central africa republic congo dr Côte d'Ivoire, egypt guinea kenya mali nigeria rwanda senegal south sudan tunisia and uganda actually the team that we we should emulate or we look to the future towards to be is south sudan south sudan are what kenya should have been because South Sudan did the unthinkable, they upset Tunisia. They beat Tunisia twice. They upset them in February and they beat them again in back to back windows. So I digress. One thing that has remained constant for the Marans across the two windows is that the team has a duty to the country, had to ha has had to duty to the country, poor preparations. They just had poor preparations in there. And they just concluded outing with Egypt. The team barely trained and traveled with eight players and one coach. The situation was not far from what happened in the February window, agreed, because what they did in February was actually more embarrassing than this. I feel like the teams, Egypt and Senegal, you know, after beating us, they took pity on us, they, and they just decided not to score abundantly the way they scored the other time, because when you look at film of the other, the first window in February, the window that we participated in, it was a dismal performance. We considered a total of 121 points in a FIBA window, the most points conceded in a FIBA window, which was, uh, which was actually pretty sad. And Coach Sadat guy in an interview with the team before the team left admitted to need to need better to need to the need of better preparations in the future events if things are to change. Things are not going to change if the board doesn't change or even the people that elected don't change because given the way that uh, other federations have surpassed us i don't feel like um we have the metal or even have the st the the stamina or even the fortitude to even contend with them because we have shown how incompetent we are but not even having fear to send even our team there even the ministry of sports going out and saying that telling the federation that they are they are, they are on their own and should source money from themselves knowing that the ministry of sports holds the kitty to fund the national team what people do not understand is a national team is an asset to the country. Anyone can be on a national team. A club, however, is an asset of the people who own the club. So you cannot treat the national team like a club and say that you need uh, funding to come and fund the national team. No, it's, the, it's an instrument by the, uh, that works for the government. It's a government thing. So as much as people try to throw the through past the back every time and saying that the national team should find a way to raise their own money no it's the ministry of sports that's supposed to cater for the national team because it's representing a country not a club if it's a club level the club has to look for sponsors to do it but if it's for the national team it's the government that has to step in especially the ministry of sports and the federation so that's one thing that people do not understand especially these pundits who are you know uh, casuals who think that they know more about basketball than even the people who talk about basketball like me so the morans got got off morans got the qualifiers off to a losing start on february 66 56 the drc it went downhill as they conceded 54 points to egypt and 45 points to senegal in the just concluded window it was a 20 and 0 walkover against the congo dr the team arrived in alexandria late and barely had rest because they got beat again 72 39 by egypt and 84 86 54 by senegal so kenya exits the qualifiers alongside rwanda central republic and mali who are disqualified from the tournament as a result of all the games all their games were nullified 
were handing a second walkover. So that's Mali. Mali had their own issues with the federation, so they decided not to they decided a coup d'etat not to or to not to show themselves. Of which I feel like Kenya we should do the same because Kenya I personally if someone asks me about the national team and the team runs, I would suggest that in the next four years we don't even go to any FIBA tournament. First we rebuild we go back to the drawing board, we get new we get personnel from Kenyan soil who know how to play. I'm not saying these people don't know how to play, but when you look at the pro players, people the so called so called pro players who who show up and say that they know how to play, when you look at them, you might think that they know a lot of pro pro plays, but when you put them on the court, they can be the most useless players. I've seen better I've seen better plays in street league africa in umoja than what i saw in <laughs> than what i saw in the fiba fiba world cup i'm not comparing uh cl basketball or kbf basketball to fiba because fiba is a is a big thing but all i'm get, trying to say is i feel like they underwhelmingly performed especially in the first in the second window i don't make excuses for them because i knew the federation and the ministry of sports screwed them screwed them over so even the results in the court was inevitable but in the first window, and even in the Afro basket, I can I see a situation where we just are not good. We are trash. Honestly, that's what I feel like. We're just trash. So the 12 teams that have qualified for the second round uh, of action have been divided into two pools. In the first round, the 16 teams are divided into four groups with four teams apiece. So each team faces faced each other three times in the group in two tournaments, played over three event window the team played in three games in each window between november 2021 february 2022 and june 2020 july 2022 so those are the windows that so november is when the window for for like the opening window for the fiba world cup qualifiers then the second window is when kenya performed then the third window when it was open it was like a all of the groups all of the teams in the groups participated so there was a total of um, 18 games to play in a span of three days. So those are a lot of day, uh, games. So there are a lot of games because the NBA, even in the regular season, there's a day that I saw 15 games. So the top three teams on each group had to advance to the second round, carrying over the results from the first round. In the second round, each team will play each new team in their group during the two tournaments played over two event windows scheduled in August 2022 and February 2022. So August 2022 is when the teams who are in the second round are going to play again. Then in February 2020, that's when we kick off the FIBA World Cup, which Kenya is not going to attend. Even August and February windows. So we're not going to attend because we are too poor and dismal to be able to contend with any team. We can't even beat we, are, we can't even beat Uganda. We can't beat Rwanda, the team that went 0-4-6 as well we, we can't okay so south sudan went six and all so we're not we're even in that level where you can compete with south sudan we talked a lot of smack especially in the pre-qualifiers with afro basket saying that we are going to beat them kenya can handle them but when it came to the afro basket they are the ones who eliminated us they got their revenge in tunisia tunisia eliminated south sudan in the afro basket and they that with that, they were able to steer themselves in the right direction. Were able to beat Tunisia two times in the in back-to-back -back windows, so you could see the development that Tunisia had and the mentality that we had. So I mean, we can't even beat Uganda. We can't beat Tanzania. We can't beat Rwanda. The only teams that we can beat are maybe Somalia, Eritrea, Burundi. You know, those are those countries. So we are among of we are among those countries. We are not among, we are we have. We have never, we have, I don't think we have, we have ever been a powerhouse. We have so, we say we have such a, you know, poor mentality when it comes to being on the court. We are too local. We have not even, I can, I dare say we, we have not been able to adapt to the FIBA style of basketball in the international stage. So that's the reason why we get the result that we get. And honestly, for change to happen, I feel like everyone needs to just step down and and leave and get people who want to run an actual federation, run a federation. At the end, I mean, in the end, it's, it all comes down to the management. It all comes down to preparation. It all comes down to taking a tournament seriously and putting the pieces and having a winning mentality. 
for you, for you to be able to get the results that you want because given this situation where we have been complacent the Kenyan runs became complacent after beating Angola which is a which this is an event that happened one and a half years ago you'll still see the Kenyan runs trying to cling on to those memories when they upset Angola knowing for a fact that Angola went and is way is miles ahead of Kenya they have been here for a long time. We act as if when the Morans qualified for the Afro Basket, they acted as if they are like four-time Afro Basket champions. When in reality, they only won two games out of six games played. So you could see the level of arrogance that they had, and they carried it over to the Afro Basket. They felt like they could beat everyone that was there. Could even see like. <laughs> I saw a couple of interviews way back, even before the, even during the Afro Basket qualifiers, saying that they are going to make the finals. Oh, oh, lo and behold, they got shocked because they didn't even make, <laughs> they didn't even go far. I mean, they only played four games in the actual Afro Basket, in which the game that they won against Mali is a team that got beat back to back, was coming off <laughs> two two back to back losses from Cote d'Ivoire in Nigeria, so. Beating them doesn't make us the king of the hill because you could see a situation where when the Kenya Marans lose, they are very quiet. But when they win, they are the loudest. You will see them, they will post, they will keep posting a lot when they win. But when they lose, they don't even post anything, which is very surprising to me because that shows you how disingenuous you are. And you're not even adapting to the reality that you're not as good as you claim to be. Maybe in your head, you claim, even maybe in the... <laughs> In their heads, they think that they are great, but in reality, they are not because the stat sheet and film don't lie, and that is what we go by when you, when when we are here, when you're in this channel, you get the truth, and the truth is a better is a bitter pill to swallow. The truth hurts, and the truth is unpopular, and that's not something that many people like taking. So uh, honestly, uh, the future seems bleak, especially in the FIBA stage, and honestly. The next time we're going to compete maybe is 2024 because we have to wait until the whole FIBA uh, World Cup qualifiers come to an end. So we'll just be, the Kenya Marans will be watching this thing at home rightfully where we deserve because we feel like we are the, we have been the architects. They are, they are the architects of their own demise. They didn't take a court tournament that had, you know, uh, bad implications seriously and that's the reason why they lost. So yeah, I just don't have much more, much more to say but for today but yeah i'll be sure to you know plug in with any news that i'll see coming out for in the future so yeah man i'm out i'm gonna see you in the next upload